Let's unbox the newest element release, the Sendero SE. Hey everybody, it's Cody Dixon RC here. So today we're gonna unbox the new Element Sendero SE. This is their sport edition Sendero. Sendero was their very first truck they ever made back in, the, it was a couple years ago when they released their first scale truck. Team Associated did under the Element uh, moniker. This is their sport edition, which is uh, basically a cheaper version. Uh, they will go over all the stuff they went a little bit cheaper on, but they've also done a couple of new things as well that's different than the last one and different than all the other Enduros as well. First things first, the body is a one-piece body instead of a two-piece body like the old Sendero, which is good. I think that's, that'll be great for less noise and bouncing around where the two pieces meet where the bed and the cab met. Uh, it'll just... I think it would just be less rattling because the last one, you could hear it moving a bunch. Um, they decided to use mini T-Springs. They don't call them mini T-Springs. They just call them a mini spring. Um, they probably can't say mini T because of Flosi and stuff like that, but they've watched what everybody's been doing, what I've been doing with the TRX4 sh shocks, what you guys have been doing with Traxxas Big Boars and everything else, trying to figure out a way to put a mini T-Spring on it to get you know some L lcg and you know stuff like that so they've actually done it with these shocks and these shocks are compatible with the metal shocks of before as well so you could theoretically take that lower cap and put it on your metal ones and run mini t-springs that way um it does have a brand new stealth x transmission uh, they call it the stealth xf now because it's a forward motor it's lower it's not like a traditional three gear trans it's more towards the front and low uh, they stated that all your um all your existing gears that are in your transmission now will work in it but i don't think that's technically true i think the three main gears work it changes them from like here here and here to like here here and here kind of thing it, it just moves them around a little bit nothing crazy but it is a little bit different um, we'll go over that later. I'm probably going to take it apart and look at it anyway because I kind of want to see it. Um, still has behind the, behind the axle steering like the other ones as well, but the difference in this one is, is there is no longer chassis mounted steering. It is now on the axle, so it is a SOA, servo on axle setup. These axles are also different as well. They have a larger input bearing in it uh, for the pinion because a lot of people were having problems with the bearing going bad and the pinion blowing out and then you'd have the bi ring and pinion and stuff like that and nobody likes to do that and plus these weren't the greatest stock form ones anyway you had to buy the uh, factory team ones to be just that much better so speaking of bearings this truck does not have a single bearing in it it has all metal bushings in it uh, it does not state brass it just says metal they look kind of like brass the idea behind that is no maintenance uh, these are not supposed to wear out they eventually will probably wear out but the idea of it is a bearing when it goes into water it becomes rust and it starts rusting up very quickly and you have to maintain them or change them or whatever you want to do as far as that goes quite often if you're going to play in the water these you should not have to do that you can go in the water blow this thing off put it on the shelf and it'll be fine till the next time you go run those bushings do not rust they don't seize i'm not going to say they don't they probably would in extreme conditions but for the most part they should not do that um so let's go to electronics. It's got the same old Reedy servo in it. Um, it's probably going to be one you want to just get rid of and do something else with. Uh, it does have their Reedy SC480X, which is their tunable ESC. Um, it, I, I haven't really used one. I'm probably going to keep the one in this one for a while until I decide what I'm going to do with it. That's another thing. We'll talk about that later. But first, let's get this thing out of here. Um, cool box like always their box art's always nice very nice looking truck uh, they have the bumpers on it are a lot smaller and more tucked into the body um, it does have a different kind of tire on it than normal as well i don't quite know let's see it's on this side here they call them a pin seeker tire and we'll look at those more in depth here in a minute uh it's cool they have the the element logo inside the tire it's kind of neat it does have a true plastic steely style beadlock uh, that's kind of neat it is a 12.8 wheelbase truck not a 12.3 wheelbase truck 
I, I thought they would go 12-3, but I guess not. Um, so it is going to be a 12-8 truck, which is fine, I guess. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I don't. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the giant uh, wheelbase trucks unless you've got a giant truck. Um, it still has a spot to put a servo winch up in the front, up top there. Um, it has integrated winch line mounting, which is kind of cool. It looks like I think the bumper does have a legit fair lead in it. Yes, you can see through it. Um, they state that the from the original Sendero, the plastic grill that went in it, um, they had it in chrome gunmetal, I think in black as well. It fits this truck also, the body. This one does not come with any um, molded bits on it. No wipers, no grill, no headlight buckets, no taillight buckets, nothing like that. Um, it does have clear clear windows, which is cool. I'm sure somebody there's got buckets being made, and you can also buy the Element uh, grill. I've had someone order for a while. They just never come in. So, you know, uh, this does not come with a battery or a charger or batteries for the remote. Remember that. They did change remote as well. It's some sort of uh, cheap, probably some sort of cheap three-channel remote. Who knows? We'll look at it in just a minute. But let's get this thing out of here. All right, so what we get in the bag is a full sticker sheet with different grills that you can put on the front of it, a uh, bigger battery tray, and all the pieces to add normal shocks and to take the little springs off of it and put normal size springs on it. It comes with the lower collars, the upper collars, the whole deal to change that over if you want to. It does not have springs in it, but it does have that. It does have a longer uh, body post as well for the back for if you want to run an SUV body. Um, and of course the sticker pack, their sticker packs are always so cool. All right, let's take this off of here. All right, here's the truck out of the box. I like this color. I've always loved the dark gray, you know, like a, a that, that dull, shiny gray, kind of weird to explain. But I like the black on the fender liner or the fender wells and the lower part of the body. I like I like that, that's a good look. It's tight in this, uh, this slider here. Oh yeah, it's got fitted sliders so the body fits inside of the slider if you want it to. You can peel this, oh, that is, that is not good. What is that? Why did y'all do this? Oh, that's horrible. All right, well, golly, that is not a uh, static clean. That is glue. That is, uh, that is a horrible idea, Element. What are y'all doing? I've got some spots i got to take up, take off. All right, so looks pretty good. Uh, it looks like the body, why does it look like that? I don't know. Anyway, no big deal. Uh, bumper could go in a little bit. I don't know. It looks pretty good. I kind of like it. I like the lowered. I like the lowered stance. I've always loved the lowered stance, and it doesn't go all the way. I mean, that's that would be all the way down. Probably if you put some super soft or ultra soft springs on this thing, it'll do that all the time. And I think that looks good. Um, all right, so I'm gonna come around here, and we're gonna look at all the rest of this stuff. All right, so let's talk about the remote this thing comes with. It is a basic. It's a FlySky remote. It's a four-channel remote. Um, this is the same remote that comes with the FMS Mashigan. It comes with the Rock Hobby stuff. It comes with the SCX or the FCX24. This is pretty much going to be probably your basic RTR remote for almost everything you get from here on out. They have figured out how to make this thing super cheap. I think this is like a $40 remote. I don't even think it's that. I don't even think it's that expensive. I think it's even cheaper than that. You can tell it's cheap. It is flimsy. It's plastic everywhere. The spring return spring is not bad, but it is a going to be a super basic remote it takes four double a's it has a channel four single switch channel three is a on off on three position switch it does have its settings in here to change things i don't think you have any you have steering you have steering rate which is good basically throttle and steering reverse bind steering throttle trim that's it so nothing special probably the first thing to go in mind to be honest so so let's look at this truck here. I'm gonna take the body off of it so we can look at all the stuff on the inside. So the little pads that go on the little body clips are also that 
super strong glue crap. Dang, God, that is ridiculously horrible. Anyway, um, we're gonna that right now. all right. So first thing you'll notice when you look at this, when you see it, is the motor. See how it, it is a very compact, down low front motor instead of it being up here. The other ones were super high. This is really, really lower. Looks really, really nice, except for the, all the stainless bolts, which I'm assuming they did that on purpose. Uh, you do still get the dual servo spot up front. So if you do want to change this to CMS, I think you can do it. Yes, it has a pan hard on the axle as well. It does come with a metal servo horn. Uh, it is a servo and axle. It has its own mount for that. Um, it does come installed with the shorty battery tray. They do have a longer battery tray if you wanted to use such a thing. Uh, it has a fuel cell back here in the back for no other reason, I think, than just to have it there. I can't really see any reason to have that there. So I do notice that the front shock towers are not a shock tower with a pan hard mount. Um, they are just normal shock towers. It looks like it's the same ones that are in the, the rear. They can just be flip flopped. But there is two holes <clears throat> in the chassis rails to put the like the gatekeeper metal pan hard if you wanted to do that. That should work. There is tons of holes in the back to move wheelbases if you want to do it. There's a lot of them in this frame rail. I do notice that the beside the ESC is two receiver ports that you can put in, uh, I would assume, some kind of power if you wanted to power something, which keep in mind, I, I don't know if this, yes, this ESC will do 7.4 volts with the program card. You have to buy it separately. It does not come with this truck. One new thing to the Sendero, the newest one here, the SE, is the addition of inner fenders. These are a solid inner fender, not a like Lexam. This is an injected molded and they are bolted in the front. They are bolted in the rear on the, the, the little side plates as well. Pretty cool. Shocks have a nice top bleeder uh, on them. Uh, that's a new thing that they started doing. Uh, I think with the Ecto, I think had that and then the gatekeeper and stuff like that. I think I'll have that as well. Mini T-Springs does have the white Delrin balls in all the links and the shocks. This is supposed to be their upgraded plastic um, ball besides using a steel, stainless steel ball or anything like that. Uh, we'll see how they last. I think I might keep those in there just to see what they do. Now let's flip it over to the bottom. Um, so this is where things get a little rough. So I haven't talked about it, but this truck is $299 which is a really good deal for a decent scale trail truck that's not going to be used strictly for trails. It's going to be a, this is going to be a decent rock crawler. All the Senderos did really well. I think with this motor going in the front, it's going to be even better. $299 is hard to beat now. This is where the reasoning why it's so cheap comes in. A, it doesn't have bearings in it. B, it doesn't have a licensed body. C, it doesn't have licensed tires or bead locks. These are all just their brand stuff. Um, the other thing it has is plastic links. Upper, lower, it's four link front and rear, but they are a plastic material, um, kind of like Axial did with their first, uh, I think with the first Honcho or whatever, it was plastic. I think the Deadbolt was plastic as well. So that's kind of where you're difference comes in for the pricing everybody wants a cheaper truck of course i get it i understand all these rtrs are expensive the bushido the ecto they're all 400 plus dollars you know you want something that you can snap a battery in this thing and go this is going to be the ticket for that at 299 dollars is going to be super hard to beat in my opinion for a ready to run truck like this uh, i know Putting this up against like the Mashigans, these are two different types of trucks, two different type of driving styles you're gonna use it with. This truck you can take out and climb, you know, massive degree, probably not massive degrees, but high degree of crawling on, you know, rock faces and rocks and things like that. The Mashigan will probably do that, but not well. And you've gotta worry about the body getting ruined if you roll it over, things like that. You don't really have to worry about this one because it's Lexan. And it's a thicker Lexan than the last Lexan. That should not tear like the last one did. Boy, that last one tore. Every one I took out of the package almost had a tear in it. All right, let's talk wheels and tires. So these are not a uh, licensed wheel or tire. Uh, they are a 1.9 B-lock. This is a 1.9, 4.7 inch tall tire. 
of their branding, they call them the Pin Seekers. And the reason being is because if you look at them, it's got the little emblem in the middle is the pin that's on the Element logo in the center where it says RC. That's the pin, the drop pin for you know GPS and things like that. Also, when you look at that, you'll see it does have scale rotors and calipers on them. They're made into the axle, which is pretty cool. Uh, the wheels are a steely style 1.9 plastic beadlock. Um, pretty cool. They do take that same plastic hub. I'm sure this thing's got plastic hexes on it. Um, it does have a bolt-on center cap. Nothing crazy, nothing special about that. I think it's pretty cool. I, I like it. I think um, I think this is going to be my next little build. I think I'm going to do a comp budget build. Now, when I say comp, I mean I'm going to try and do legit class two stuff. Uh, the budget build is the other side of that that's going to be a little tricky. Uh, my previous budget build was the TRX4, and it was a $50 budget kind of thing. I'm kind of working out logistics to figure out how I want to do this um, and how I want it to be. Because I think in today's world, you can probably build you a Class 2 comp truck for not a lot of money. Now, caveat to that is I didn't say competitive. I just said you could build one and probably go to a Class 2 comp and, you know, play and have fun. Uh, that's the point of this is fun not the su serious super competition craziness that comes with the class 2 comp stuff it's ridiculous at how crazy that stuff is so we're going to try that I don't really know what I'm going to do with that just yet I'm still working out logistics on how to do that I do want to go drive this thing in stock form which I plan to do in a couple of days so be on the lookout for that as well I'm going to film this thing at, I'm going to a guy's house he's going to have a little get together comp kind of deal I'm going to try and film stuff there and I'm going to get some film of this truck here probably let some other people drive it because people need to try things like this I, I get that you know this doesn't not everybody gets a chance to drive one so I'm going to let everybody drive one I'm going to keep it stock I'm going to change the battery lead to an XT60 so I can put my batteries in it I'm probably going to keep the factory remote uh, radio for now until I figure out what I'm going to do also need to know if that counts towards uh, a budget build considering I have the same radio for every truck does just does just count buying the receiver count or does i have to buy do i have to count a whole radio i don't know let me know let me know in the comments below also let me know what you'd like to see me do with this as far as the class two stuff i kind of really wish that like the hope these tires work out because it'd be cool not to have to buy tires first thing uh, i've got ideas on tires i'd love to use for this truck but it'd be cool not to have to buy tires speaking of tires these things are super narrow i don't know if y'all noticed that or not but that's it and thanks for watching guys this is a quick overview of unboxing of the new sendero se these are listed on my website uh, if you want to buy one they're 2.99 they will be drop shipped to you directly meaning they will come directly from my supplier not from me um, i will probably have one in stock when i go to events but past that probably not so um, if you want one just click the link below in the comments or just go to the, or not the comments click the link below in the description or go to my website um, and check it out and see what you want to see. Oh, we didn't even talk about this. Look at this. So the fair leads in the front and this front bumper mount right here has a hole in it for the for the servo winch line. That's cool. Good for them. I like it when companies pay attention and listen and try to do things to help out the the consumer us. Um, I really think this is what we need in a company. I, I hate to say it, but the other two companies don't really listen to what we want and what we need or what we even, even though everybody doesn't ask for all these things that they did, they were listening, they were watching. They're watching people do front motors, you know, the Toyzukis and stuff like that. They're watching all that stuff and they're figuring out a way to make it into a mass produced truck, which is pretty cool. You gotta give props to Element for doing stuff like that not everybody's doing that the other two brands are not doing that period um, if you tell them an idea on something they go okay and they just throw it away uh, element seems to have a couple of guys that are really really paying attention uh, brad and schultz and stuff like that they're really listening and probably i don't know if they're writing it down or whatever but they're probably got a folder of ideas of things they can probably try to throw together so props to them so good deal there so Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.